3. Facsimile number 2 from the Book of Abraham. There is another facsimile in the Book of Abraham revealing additional areas of mistranslation. Facsimile number 2, as it is described by Joseph Smith and included in the Pearl of Great Price, contains different scenes interpreted by Joseph Smith. They vary considerably in content. Kalab, signifying the first creation, nearest to the celestial or the residence of God, stands next to Kalab, called by the Egyptian Zolablish, which is the next grand governing creation near to the celestial or the place where God resides. God, sitting upon his throne, clothed with power and authority. This is one of the governing planets also, and is said by the Egyptians to be the sun, and to borrow its light from Kalob through the medium of Kaiv Anrash, which is the grand key. Facsimile number two compared to similar a similar Egyptian hypocephalus amulet. But again, the experts discovered Joseph's translation did not match the evidence. It is actually a rather common funerary amulet termed a hypocephalus, so-called because it was placed under hypo, a mummy's head, cephalus. Its purpose was to magically keep the deceased warm and to protect the body from desecration by grave robbers. Ibid, page 104. This type of amulet was very common and several similar amulets have been recovered and translated over the years, confirming their nature and the fact they contradict Joseph's translation. None of the content translated by Joseph for the book of Abraham appears on the amulet. It is not what Joseph claimed. Joseph Smith claimed facsimile number three depicted Abraham sitting upon Pharaoh's throne by the politeness of the king with a crown upon his head representing the priesthood, King Pharaoh, whose name is given in the characters above his head, signifies Abraham in Egypt, Olimla, a slave belonging to the prince, but this is contrary to the true translation of the hieroglyphic. The facsimile actually depicts the deceased being led before Osiris, god of the dead, and behind the enthroned Osiris stands his wife Isis. Joseph Smith among the Egyptians by Wesley P. Walters, 1973, page 29. The text is fallacious, even when there is no facsimile. To make matters worse, areas of text retranslation identified by Mormon church documents for generations prior to the discovery of the papyri also conflict with the true translations. Not only is Smith's translation related to the facsimiles untrue, every other portion of the papyri translation is also false. Papyrus section known as PJS 11. This piece of papyri, designated Papyrus Joseph Smith 11, PJS 11, was originally connected to PJS 1, from which facsimile number one was inserted. This was verified by Dr. Klaus Baer, an Egyptologist at the University of Chicago who wrote, they clearly adjoin as proposed. Papyrus fibers are always irregular and can be used, much like fingerprints, to check whether fragments come from the same sheet. In this case, the horizontal fibers on the left and right edges of Papyrus Joseph Smith I and 11, respectively, match exactly. From Dialogue, a journal of Mormon thought, Autumn 1968, pages 133, 134. This portion of the papyri has been translated by Professor Richard Parker of Brown University. Line 1. This great pool of Khonsu. Line 2. Osiris Hor, justified, born of Tekhebet, a man likewise. Line 3. After, his two arms are fast, aimed to his breast. One wraps the book of breathings, which is. Line 4 with writing both inside and outside of it, with royal linen, it being placed at his left arm. Line five, near his heart, this having been done at his. Line six, wrapping and outside it. If this book be recited for him, then. Line seven, he will breathe like the soul, S of gods, forever and. Line eight, ever. The left side of the fragment begins the series of spells to be recited. Dialogue, 
A Journal of Mormon Thought, Summer 1968, page 98. Even before the original papyri were rediscovered, the Mormon church had been in possession of a series of original book of Abraham translation manuscripts. These manuscripts were used by Joseph Smith as his translation notes, and several had a mysterious set of symbols located in the left margin. For years, these were understood to be the Egyptian hieroglyphics from which all the English text to the right each page was translated. Manuscript translation notes from Joseph with Egyptian symbols in the margins. Now, with the discovery of PJS 11, experts finally located the series of hieroglyphics seen on the translation manuscript for years. The Egyptian characters in the left margin of page three of the original book of Abraham translation manuscript, above right, match a succession of Egyptian characters from the upper right column of a section of the PJS 11 book of Abraham scroll. In essence, the original translation notes have a series of Egyptian characters from the papyrus scroll copied down the left margin, indicating the book of Abraham was translated from this section of the papyrus scroll. But as you might have suspected by now, none of the true translation of the papyri matches the translation of Joseph Smith. Consecutive hieroglyphics on the PJS 11 found on the notes. Modern examination of the papyri did not provide the confirmation Mormons were hoping for, but it did confirm something important. Mormons had accepted the Book of Abraham for decades, believing the church's assertion Joseph Smith translated it by the power of God as he had claimed. This manner of translation, allegedly guided by God, was the same mechanism by which Joseph claimed to translate the Book of Mormon. The false translation of the Book of Abraham therefore, cast serious doubt on the Book of Mormon as well, forever debilitating Joseph's claim he was a true, inspired prophet of God. Thousands of Mormons left the church as the result of this discovery, while thousands more are completely unaware of this important piece of evidence.